Today's location is the Okura Estuary. The Okura River rises in the low hills to the south of Silverdale and flows into Karipiro Bay on the Hauraki Gulf. Just take a moment or two to take in the beauty of this spot. Kia ora tato, morena, et te whana, te kraiti no mai, haere mai. Good morning and welcome. Uh, welcome to the service for Sunday the 27th of September. Back in 1950, Albert Einstein wrote in a letter to Rabbi Norman Sallet, A human being is a part of the whole, called by us universe a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings, as something separate from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole nature in its beauty. Today we continue the journey through the season of creation. This Sunday we take a look at the importance of rivers and waterways. When Māori introduced themselves to others, the Awa or river or Wai or Roto lake is an important part of the mihi the greeting alongside their moanga and tupuna. Thus in this way, waterways are intrinsically linked to whakapapa, giving rise to the Māori whakatoki, the proverb, ka o te awa, ka te awa ka o. I am the river and the river is me. With the natural environment being vital to human survival, we are all challenged to preserve and protect our air, our water, our lands, and the resources within for the benefit and survival of ourselves and our mukapuna. As drops of rain that find each other and build to become a track, a rivulet, a stream, a river, a sea, so are we drawn together. So are we fortunate to find each other. So are we bound together on this shared passage toward an unknown ocean and eternity. We gather as many drops, each winding our path down live surfaces and ruts. How we pull together as a single body, flowing together for a time. Together we are a stream, at times even a river. For, for with our shared force we can travel toward oceans of meaning and seas of connection. Thank you. 
Opening prayer. We pray. Celebrating God, we celebrate our refreshing presence, your refreshing presence among us and our kin in creation, especially the rivers, the creeks and the wetlands of earth. May our spirits be lifted to rejoice with the vibrant world of rivers. rivers. May it be so. Kia ora te whanau. this is a message for you all, but especially for the young and the young at heart. This week is New Zealand Sign Language Week, so I thought I'd start by sharing some signs with you. Over the past few weeks, we have looked at forest, land, and this week we're looking at rivers. So here are the signs. Forest. Nahe nahe. Land. Whenua. River. Awa. I love rivers. I love how they change as they travel towards the sea. They start off small, but travel fast as they run down steep slopes, carving out shapes in the hills. Later, these small streams join other small streams and grow in size. Here, the water travels faster in some places and slower in others, but together they cut out a beautiful curved path to travel. Later still, as more and more streams join, the river is bigger. Here it can start to slow and begins to follow a straighter path as it heads towards the ocean, its final destination. For me, life is like a river. As you start out in life, you travel quickly and often don't know where you're going, frequently changing direction, but changing the landscape as you go. As you get older, you start to make decisions about which path you'll join. You travel on your journey with more people and you may meander a little along the way. As you get older still, your path tends to straighten out more and maybe slow down a little. In your life, you have met and got to know a lot of people and they travel on their journey with you, all heading towards a final destination. Wherever you are on your journey of life now, if you're young and moving fast, if you're a little older and making decisions about which path to take, or older still and travelling a well-planned out journey ahead of you. Take time to enjoy the landscape around you and the people you're travelling with. Times may be ever-changing and things can be uncertain, but for me I appreciate the places I go, the people I meet and the path I am taken on to get there. I hope you too are able to make the most of your river of life, the journey you have travelled so far and the path that lies ahead of you. Aroha nui and God bless.
Prayer of Awareness. Please follow along with me in the words in bold. The earth is a sparkling blue and white jewel laced with slowly swirling veils of white, like a small pearl in a thick sea of black mystery. All creation is a song of praise to God. O moving force of wisdom, you encircle the wheel of the cosmos. You encompass all that is, all that has life, in one vast circle. All creation is a song of praise to God. It could be that God has not absconded, but spread, as our vision and understanding of the universe have spread, to a fabric of spirit and sense so grand and subtle, powerful in a new way, that we can only feel blindly of its hem. All creation is a song of praise to God. Stardust is not just fairy tale magic, it is what we are really made of. All creation is a song of praise to God. Great Spirit, give me the strength to walk the soft earth, a relative to all that is. All over the earth, the faces of living things are all alike. This is my prayer. Hear me. All creation is a song of praise to God. There is not anything new to be born. It has been within you from the beginninglessness beginning. It is only to be awakened, to become aware of itself in you. All creation is a song of praise to God. For in God we live and move and have our being. All creation is a song of praise to God. When you stand in the presence of the moon, you become a new creation. The elementary particles of your body have absorbed an influence, and in that sense they, and you, are brand spanking new, a human being resonating everywhere with moonlight. All creation is a song of praise to God. We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started, and know the place for the first time. All creation is a song of praise to God. Kia ora. now we have the question of the week. This time our question is, where has the river of life carried you? If you haven't already noticed, the theme of this service is rivers, the ever-flowing bodies of water that connote physical and spiritual nourishment. Both in the world of the Bible and of today, rivers undoubtedly bring life wherever they go. They provide for us in a multitude of ways, including, but not limited to, being reliable water sources for consumption and agriculture generating electricity for our daily needs, and bringing us comfort while we relax in a nice spot nearby. Metaphorically, it can also represent our journeys in life, and the love of God throughout them all. Through thick and thin, the river will always move, offering both challenges and moments of respite to strengthen us in body and spirit. If you can view rivers with this perspective, ask yourself this. Where has the river of life carried you? You could talk about where you are currently in your journey, whether it is a high, low, or middle point, you can be aware of the present and prepare for the future. Alternatively, you can approach a question as a chronicle of many experiences you've had, the whole journey so far. Rivers provide us many opportunities even when it comes to answering this week's question. Perhaps you can share your answers not only through speech and text, but using a visual medium. Create a diagram charting your journeys, sculpt landmarks that represent special times. Replicate the movements of a river in some form of dance. Those are just some suggestions. Allow your body and mind to flow freely this week and enjoy forming your response to the question. Where has the river of life carried you?
Ezekiel chapter 47 verses 5 to 12. It was a river that I could not pass through, for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in, eh? a river that could not be passed through. And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. As I went back, I saw on the bank of the river very many trees on the one side and on the other. And he said to me, This water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah and enters the sea. When the water flows into the sea, the water will become fresh. And wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live. And there will be very many fish. For this water goes there, that the waters of the sea may become fresh. So everything will live where the river goes. Fishermen will stand beside the sea, from Engedi to Anaglam. It will be a place for the spreading of nets. Its fish will be of very many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. But its swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They are to be left for salt. And on the banks, on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail. But they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water for them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. Amen. Psalm 65 verses 9 to 13, the Good News Translation. You show your care for the land by sending rain. You make it rich and fertile. You fill the streams with water. You provide the earth with crops. This is how you do it. You send abundant rain on the ploughed fields and soak them with water. You soften the soil with showers and cause the young plants to grow. What a rich harvest your goodness provides. Wherever you go, there is plenty. The pastures are filled with flocks, the hillsides are full of joy. The fields are covered with sheep, the valleys are full of wheat. Everything shouts and sings for joy.
Revelation chapter 22 verses 1 and 2 Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also, on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Amen. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 to 17, from the Good News Translation. At that time, Jesus arrived from Galilee and came to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. But John tried to make him change his mind. I ought to be baptized by you, John said, and yet you have come to me. But Jesus answered him, let it be so for now, for in this way we shall do all that God requires. So John agreed. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. Then heaven was opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and lighting on him. Then a voice said from heaven, This is my own dear Son, with whom I am pleased. The river flowing out from God's throne, the sanctuary, emphasizes the importance of rivers. Those words represent to us a beautiful vision of the river of the waters of life, bright as crystal, trees bearing fruit along the banks, food, fruit for food and leaves for healing. The psalmist writes, You, God, show your care for the land by sending rain and filling the streams with water. However, while water has been vital for religious symbolism and ritual throughout human history, too many members of the world's religions have neglected to respect water as a finite natural resource. Many members of our religious communities and <clears throat> and likewise many people who profess no religion, are in need of inner spiritual conversion to appreciate the value of water. When it comes to water, we need to move through a process of seeing scientifically, evaluating ethically, reflecting spiritually, and acting effectively. New Zealand has 70 major river systems, that run for more than 425,000 kilometres. There are about 250,000 hectares of wetland, along with 50,000 lakes, 4,000 of which are larger than one hectare. About 440 billion cubic metres of water flow in New Zealand's rivers and streams, with a further 700 billion cubic metres stored in underground aquifers. A report put out by Stats New Zealand and the Ministry for the Environment in April of this year found that pollution affects almost all of Aotearoa's rivers and many lakes and aquifers. The report also shows how the country's waterways are impacted by urban development, farming and forestry. It highlights the interconnectedness between the various impacts from overuse to the loss of habitat for our native species and made clear link between human arrival in New Zealand and dramatic degradation. The condition of our rivers is indicative of our spiritual well-being. The above report would suggest that we are suffering from a spiritual malaise, the symptoms of which are evidenced in the poor health and lack of well-being, not only of our rivers, but also the natural flora and fauna of this country. How can this be addressed? 
The Whanganui River provides an example of what can be done. Te Awa serves a critical role in the lives of iwi. It is their native river, the primary source of travel and a source of physical and spiritual sustenance. The expression Te Awa Tupua is the Māori way of viewing the river as a whole, an integrated entity from the mountains to the sea. The spiritual and physical connection of Whanganui iwi to the river can be encompassed by the tribal proverb ko o te awa, ko te awa ko o, which means, as we have already noted, I am the river, the river is me. The river and the surrounding area is indivisible and a living entity, which is simultaneously physical as it is a, li a living ecosystem and spiritual. In March of 2017, it was declared that Te Awa Tupua has all the rights, powers, duties and liabilities of a legal person. The legislation is based on the understanding of nature being an inalienable, in an inalienable connection with humanity as one living entity. The river iwi perceive their health and well-being as intrinsically interconnected with the health and well-being of the Whanganui River. Water can be a dangerous thing, but water is the lifeblood of us all. It is why flood stories are so powerful and so sacred. The earth gets destroyed by water and it gets rebuilt by the same water that gives life to everything again. So we must hold great respect for water because her power is fierce, yet humble. But so often, because we do not see water as a living being, we use her, monetize her, and in essence, lose our ability to see her as sacredly created at all. The Bible passages present us with beautiful visions of rivers crystal with crystal clear water, rivers of life providing sustenance and healing. As Jesus rose out of the waters of the River Jordan, he was filled with the Spirit of God. As retired Methodist minister William Wallace writes, Through immersion in the waters of life, there comes the realisation that to be a child of earth is to be a child of God, and to be immersed in the waters of our own Jordan is to be immersed in the earth, in our own history, in the cultures of the earth, and in the mystery itself. May the Spirit of God, that stream of living water, flow through you and merge with other streams, forming a mighty river of bright as crystal water that will bring regeneration and renewal. Love flows like a river to the sea. On water. Water is the best thing in the world. It benefits all things without competing with them. It flows to lower places that people do not want to go. Therefore, it is closest to the way. Look for the lowly places. Look in the depths of all things. Treat others with mercy. Speak trusting words. Do right things when governing. Act mercifully and timely. Do not compete with others and there will be no fault with you. The great way of life is like a river, of which its overflowing water goes to the left and right. All things depend on it for life, and it does not turn away from them. The way accomplishes its work, but does not claim credit for it. It provides for and nourishes all things, but does not claim to be master over them. It does not seek its own will and is considered small. All things come to it, but it does not control them, and it never claims greatness, and therefore it is great.
Prayers for ourselves and others. Somewhere, someone. The kingdom of love is coming because somewhere, someone is kind when others are unkind. Somewhere, someone shares with another in need. Somewhere, someone refuses to hate while others hate. Somewhere, someone is patient and waits in love. Somewhere, someone returns good for evil. Somewhere, someone serves another in love. Somewhere, someone is calm in a storm. Somewhere, someone is loving everybody. Is that someone new? And let us say a contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer together. Gracious Spirit, who loves us like a mother, whose realm is blooming among us now and within. We pray that your compassion guide us in every action. Give us what we need for each day and help us to be satisfied with the miracle of that alone. Forgiver, whose embrace brings us to wholeness without our asking, may we reconcile ourselves to one another in humility and may we cancel the crushing debts that imprison our neighbours, so that communities of joy and health may flourish. 
May we neither profit from nor ignore evil, but ever work to thwart it with non-violence as we co-create the realm of peace in this world, now and each day. Amen. Closing words. It starts with a drop, then a trickle, a burble, a rush of water bubbling toward its destination, and finally the wide, the endless sea. All rivers run to the sea. Though our experiences have differed, these waters mingle, signifying our common humanity. Today we have come together and shared in this sacred community. May you depart from this time together, hopes, hearts filled with hope for new beginnings, a fresh start. Go forth, but return to this community, where rivers of tears may be shed, where dry souls are watered, where your joys, joy bubbles, where your life cup overflows, where deep in your spirit you have found in this place a home, all rivers run to the sea and a blessing in the river the water continually flows on yet the river is ever there our lives flow on in endless song yet life and joy shall never end amen And we say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.